Welcome. My name is Georgine, and this is your core flow in 20 minutes. So you'll need two props, a strap that has uh, maybe a little bit of give to it, and then a block and a mat, but that's just something that we'll have anyways. All right. So to set up, take your strap and just kind of place it so it's a little bit open at the front of your mat. And then have your block about mid mat. And then we'll start on the back. So take your time to get down there. You can roll down fast or slow. And then place the block between your thighs. Feel the broadness through your chest, robotting your arms and lift up to your high point and lower down, lifting and lowering. And every time you are lifting and lowering, think about squeezing the block a little bit as well. And then staying at the top and then just squeeze your thighs in. So just pulsing the thighs in. Keep a length through the spine. Keep rooting into your upper arms. I'll do about 16 little squeezes in. If this does not feel good for hips, knees, ankles, etc., back off, or you don't have to squeeze, or you can take the block away. Coming back to full range of motion, lowering and lifting. Keep feeling that sense of heaviness through your heels. Last few. And lift up to the high point, same thing, squeezing in 16 times, little tiny squeeze. And it's something that's not super visible, but you'll definitely feel it. Still feeling that broadness through your chest, heaviness in your heels. And lower all the way down. Take a little windshield whip up your legs, getting rid of the block just in your hands, because we'll use it. Momentarily, this is a very block strap day. Okay, so from here, uh, tabletop your left leg, press left hand to block and thigh to block, right hand to belly, and then just toe tapping the ground. Now what I see a lot of usually is just kicking the heel to bum. That's not what I'm looking for. Think about hinging at the hip and reaching as far out as you can. I always imagine that I have a cat sleeping right um, behind my leg, um, my assistants are sleeping somewhere, so they can't be here for that. Okay, and then next part, same thing with the left leg. Just kick your right heel out. Now, does it matter if you point or flex? No, it's just kind of something to think about. I like to be kind of purposeful either point or flex. So just keep kicking that right heel out. Notice if your low back, neck try to engage, they want to try to help. If they do, back off a bit. Okay, right away, other side before we change our mind. So right hand to block, tap the left toes down. Lightly tap or air tap. Because the goal you'll start to feel is just that like you're distributing the weight further away from you so the abdominals have to work a little bit more. Think about that lever. And then Flex or point the foot, kick the heel out, straighten ish the leg. Again, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, it's kind of what it feels like. But because this is a video, I'm going to show you a visual representation. But finding what works best. But the goal here is to feel that core. Okay, now block between upper inner thighs, hands behind head, long through the neck. And then lift your head and shoulders off the ground and lower. Now think about your head being dead weight here. So I always think another cat analogy coming up is uh, picking up a sleeping cat. Um, they're just like super dead weight and just kind of working through that sort of feeling. And then lifting to the highest point, little tiny pulses, little tiny reach. Kind of how I felt when I was on the 
metro today and I couldn't quite reach the bar to hold on to. Okay, back to full range of motion, lower and left. And notice the legs will want to move here, so try to keep them fairly still. Another thing you can do instead of having the block between the thighs is resting the block on the shins. Um, I didn't do that for this, maybe next video I will. And then pulse at the top, little tiny lifts. Head heavy, core hugging in. Last few, you got this, and then lower down. And then place the block between your feet. Now that's too challenging, you can air block it anytime. Okay, and then from here, just tap your heels down both at the same time and then a little further each time. We're only doing a few of these. And then tap even further. And then tap even further. Hover, lower the legs all the way down. Reach your arms overhead, ribs tuck in, hips chill, legs heavy. Reach your hands up, head up, shoulders up, core hugs in, and like a wave, you're kind of peeling yourself all the way up. Find a forward fold, shake it up, chill, whatever you need. Okay, fun part. So keep the block between your feet, bend your knees. Uh, I find this makes it so the hips don't engage as much. And make sure you have nothing behind you done that before, not fun, and find the sense of lift. So again, hips chill. Okay, keep the legs still, hug that block in, belly hugs in, and put piece by piece of your spine down. Now, if you find you start to go faster, that's your edge, don't go all the way down. And then reach your arms overhead, and then kind of hug through the belly first, then peel your chest and head over that engagement, and then reach forwards, and then lift up again. Now, if you only want to do one, cool, that's fine. But finding what works. I want you to find that point that you're like, start to challenge yourself because one might feel challenging today. And then maybe come back to it, feels a little bit easier. Maybe you want to add another one. So just keep going at your own pace and finding what works best. It depends on the day too. And once you find you have to start like using a bit of momentum, if you start to fatigue a bit, like check in with that. Okay, now going kind of low halfway down, we're finding a boat pose now. And then an option to extend and bend your legs. Feel that hugging it, broaden your chest, the neck will want to help. But fun fact, the neck cannot help your legs lift here. Feel that broadness, core hugs in. Maybe you hold and then lower down. Butterfly, feet together, knees wide, hold over your legs. Option, block under your forehead. But sometimes like that took me a while. I started with three blocks under my forehead. So maybe you just hang out, maybe you get a pillow. It's really up to you. Okay, but this is core flow, not Chill flow. Okay, so come to all fours, move through a few cat cows. I like to think about moving from my tailbone first and then rippling along the length of the spine. I personally find I get a bit more range of motion that way versus thinking about the mid spine first. It's also nice to give your brain something else to think about. Okay, from here, come to a neutral spine. Step your feet back to a plank pose, knees down, come all the way down to your belly. Okay, we're gonna use this strap now. I'm just moving the block out of the way. All right, so reach the strap out in front of you, kind of a Y, like a Y shape with your arms. Press your hips down and your feet down. Imagine someone sitting on your legs but don't have someone sitting on your legs. Forehead down, then just lift and lower your arms. Notice if you can do this without moving anything else and trying to break the strap, but making sure it's like a supportive strap. Feel the upper back engage. You start to feel your neck participate, going a little bit too far. 
also everyone's shoulder is super different, right? Okay, now lift up as if you're in a kind of a baby cobra pose. So lift your chest up, but keep the neck chill. I like to shake out my head to remind myself of that. And then lift and lower your arms, just like you did before. Same idea, you're gonna keep your legs super heavy. And up to where you place the hands, right? Okay, now keep your arms lifted and then pull down, bring your arms to a 90 degree angle. Nice, keep the forearms lifted. Imagine you're trying to keep your forearms lifted over something. Again, I wish my cats could be trained so they would come in the video sometimes. And then you're gonna hold at the top and you don't have to feel pain or pinching, back off if you need. Okay, now uh, part two with the strap. You're gonna take the strap and then place it at your low back bum area and then palms face down. Okay, and then from here, forehead down, think about lifting your shoulders up off the mat, the upper back engage. I like to bend and extend my arms a little bit here just to find that sense of strength. So you're pulling the strap apart, the hands are wider than the torso, and then lift your chest up to that baby cobra shape. Now, your torso and arms are gonna stay still as you lift and lower your legs. You're gonna start to feel the core, you're gonna start to feel the back body. If you feel any sensations that just are not working for you, back off, get curious. Notice, okay, what's causing that? And then you're gonna hold at the top and then chill out because that is exciting for most people. Because a lot of the time we're slouched words and waking up the back body with a sense of strength is really interesting for the body, but can be quite challenging. Okay, and then from here, just lifting up through plank pose. You can have your knees lifted or not. And then we're gonna come back to the block for the rest of class, pretty much. So block between upper inner thighs. Scoot your shins to the back of the mat. Come to all fours first, find that shoulder placement. So kind of a middle shoulder placement, a length through the neck, hugging into the core. And then walk your hands a palm distance forward, shift your weight forwards. And I like to find that pelvic rotation. So lifting and kind of tucking your tail. And then finding the kind of ribs drawn slightly towards each other, the front body, feeling that sense of length through the torso. And then once you find that sort of middle ground with the pelvis, you'll stay there and then tuck your toes. Keep the upper body the same, just lift your knees up and down. You can tap them down or you can go just go to a halfway point. Notice, okay, what makes it so it's challenging for the core, but also it's not um, changing the body too much, like the posture too much. So if you find you're moving around a lot or you're having to compensate a lot, less, do less. Okay, and keep the block, come to your forms, same thing. So feel that nice neutral pelvis and then lift your knees up and down, squeezing the block in. I find squeezing the block, kind of waking up those adductors, those inner thigh muscles helps that core wake up a little bit easier, which in turn makes it harder, but more sustainable. So is it easier or harder? I don't know. And then find your forearm plank hold, find your breath. And if you're like, I wasn't breathing, breathing's important, keep breathing, and then chill out. Knees down, come back to your palms, de-block yourself, and child's pose. Option arms extend in front of you, option rest them beside you. Sometimes movement, moving your head side to side or shrugging out your shoulders feels great. Sometimes it doesn't, so do what feels interesting. Okay. From here, make your way to kneeling or cross-legged if kneeling is not your friend. And then open and close your hands a few times. Roll at your wrists. You can kind of either bend your elbows or keep your arms straight. Flex your wrists. So, and then bend, shake out your arms, 
do whatever you need. It wasn't a huge amount on the wrist, just nice to move after that. Okay, block again, because it's block day or evening or whatever time of day it is for you. So take the block between the hands, then slowly roll your way down, squeezing that block, disengaging the neck. Feet hip distance apart, bring the block under your right foot to start. Roll by your arms or straighten your arms. Lift up to high point. Now the hips won't be even because one foot's higher, but it really confuses the back of the right leg, which is great. And lower and left. So I want you to think about pressing more on the block foot than the non-block foot. This can also be done on a Pilates ball. It's up to you. I like to start with the block. The broadness to chest. We'll start to feel that right hamstring. Now lift up to your highest point. Here's where it gets fun. Uh, option to stay, option to come back to the full range or table top your left leg, tap the ground, lift it up. So we were in a variation of this earlier, more core. Now this is more right leg. Again, if tapping the ground doesn't work, ear tap or find stillness. There's always another option. And then pause the top, hips even now, you're gonna pulse the hips up and down an inch. This is option one. Option two, leg straight. Option three, 45 degrees. Option four, hover your foot, but I'm not demonstrating that because um, I'm a step two, three kind of person these days. And then come all the way down. Okay, from here, tabletop your left leg. And then actually grab the block with your feet. Some motor skills there. Left hand to block. And then bring your right elbow to the block. So you're crossing your body and then kicking your right heel forwards. Now I find some people really just start laughing at this and think it's a silly pose. So if you want to air block it because you just can't keep a straight face, that's fine. You don't need to use the block. But really think about that hugging in. Now I'm just pulsing up. Now you can't really see, I'm just being still, but I'm trying to like make an indent with my elbow into the block and then lower all the way down because that is super exciting. Okay, other side, we got this. Okay, block under your left foot, bridge pose round two. So either roll by your arms or arms straight. I like the roll by myself. And then lift and lower. So again, the intention behind this kind of bridge variation is to feel the back of your left leg exists. If you find it starts cramping, take a breather, drink a lot of water, might be another reason, but sometimes because we've been working, it can be that. It can also be the muscles are like, what's going on? Okay, tabletop your right leg, tap the ground. Option air tap, option stillness, or go to a previous variation. And that's always a good thing to do if you're taking a group class. You want to still be part of the class, but you're not liking the variation, go to a previous variation. Okay, again, pulsing the hips, either tabletop the leg, leg lifts, or 45 degrees, or a super advanced version, both feet on the ground, pulse your hips, right? Sometimes, my mind, super advanced, is less. Okay, tabletop your right leg, walk to right thigh, right hand to position it, left elbow, hands behind head, elbows wide, kick your left heel forwards and back in. That broadness through chest, keep squeezing the block. Again, this can also be done with a Pilates ball. It's a bit more challenging because it's a little bit smaller. So sometimes, don't necessarily have that range of motion, so be mindful. Okay, and then little pulses. Trying to keep your legs still, my legs are moving a little bit here, and then lower down. Cool. Block the side, winch, hold up out your legs, and we're starting to wind down. So cactus your arms and just pause, knees dropped over to the right. 
And let yourself soften, check in with hips, low back. Now, if you want to feel a bit more sensation through kind of hip, low back area, if you don't really feel much, right foot on top of your left leg. Doesn't work for everyone. Other side, knees drop down. Might need to move props out of the way. And then kind of feel like the variation of the left foot to right leg. Maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. I do like the staggered leg variation though. I find it less intense for the back generally. And come back to center. And hug your knees to chest. And then draw your nose towards your knees. Feel that broadness through the upper back. Nice big breaths here. And then keep hugging your left knee to chest, right leg extends, drop the head down. Option one, stay. The goal is to chill out the right leg, the front of the right leg. The hip flexor may or may not be super engaged right now. Option, maybe you grab hold of the outside of the foot for a kind of a half happy baby variation. Or you can grab your shin and just bring the knee out a little further to the left. It's kind of what, what you're feeling. They all have the same intention behind it, chilling out the opposite leg. Some might just feel better for you. So again, option, just hug the knee in. Maybe that feels like great. Maybe you prefer a little bit more sensation for the right leg. Grab the outside of the foot, bring the knee towards armpit for a half happy baby variation, or maybe hug the shin. And then when you're ready, hug both knees in. Reach all limbs up to the ceiling. Shake it out. Let it all go. That was an intense 20 minutes. Let everything flop down. And just take this moment of rest. Take this moment to connect to your breath, your body. Notice how you feel. Maybe a little bit stronger. And sometimes it's just the strength of getting to your mat. And start to bring movement to your hands and feet. Switch your arms overhead. Then roll gently to one side, curl into a little fetal position. Option to stay or gently press yourself up to a seat. And you guys made it. Awesome work. You made it to your mat. You moved. And again, doesn't matter which variation, you found what worked for you. So see you next time. My name is Georgine. And if you like this video, sure give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more on the first and third Wednesday of the month make sure you hit subscribe see you next time